Hey guys, what's up? Today we're continuing our discussion on NFTs or non-fungible tokens and we're going to be talking about the most popular NFTs right now which is NBA Top Shot. If you saw my video several weeks back, I mentioned to you in the end there that that, that was just a primer before I started really talking about NFTs. And since I've gone through a number of packs, I've gone through the NBA Top Shot marketplace, I've bought some, sold some, I feel like now I'm in a better position to talk to you more about NBA Top Shot and NFTs as a whole. Now very quickly, let's go into the concepts. NFTs are non-fungible tokens. Fungible actually means replaceable. I don't know, I've never used fungible in my life. I've never come across it until NFTs. So I learned something new. I hope you learned something new today too. And basically, NFTs are these non-replaceable digital media or digital arts that you can collect. I know it might sound a little silly in our age where we have YouTube and all these digital media that we're collecting these and storing them for value. Where in today's video, I'm not really going into questioning the value of NFTs and why this new technology is already minting new millionaires. I'm here to share with you my strategy on how I approach NFTs in the whole investment spectrum, is it really a worthwhile investment? That's what we'll try to find out today, so let's find out. So in trying to come up with a short-term and long-term strategy for NFTs, I'm basically approaching this from the two most obvious starting points. Number one would be NBA basketball cards, and number two would be the blockchain technology on which cryptocurrency runs on. But as I was learning about it, I said, huh, interesting, NBA and blockchain, so is this sort of like an NBA as crypto? In my experience in the last 7 or 8 weeks or so, I've discovered that NBA Top Shot running on blockchain technology is simply just that while they both use blockchain technology, their actual application and how it's used and how it appreciates and how things are transacted are actually on different pages. They're similar, but they're not the same. For NBA Top Shot and NFTs, blockchain is just really the enabling technology there. While on the valuation and appreciation side, I think that's where these two become very different. What am I saying? Well, I was expecting that the valuation of NBA Top Shot would be somewhat similar to cryptocurrency. You can trade Bitcoin, you can trade in and out, take your quick wins, take your quick losses. By simply looking at the trading charts, just look at how much a Bitcoin is buying and selling and put it in the market and within seconds, you would have gotten rid of your Bitcoin without much to it really. Well, for NB Top Shot, I was surprised that in the valuation of moments, and moments stand for the current equivalent of basketball cards, there's so much that goes into how an NBA moment actually gets valued. So a moment actually highlights a, a specific play of a player. If the player has moved on to a current team, that old moment would have appreciated and would be in a better value. Of course, it's highly dependent also on how the NBA as a whole is progressing. So if a player is having a good week, or perhaps he wins the MVP, a certain yearly award, or perhaps the value of that player would go up. I guess there are so many in NBA factors that you have to account for. And on the other, there's also NBA Top Shot. Pretty much calling the shots as a company are the ones who are generating or minting these moments. So basically, if they say they are only minting 10,000 pieces, and then if they are coming up with a certain moment, but they are releasing it as 35,000, so that would be a common card rather than a limited edition. And also, the serial number, the sequence of the NBA Top Shot moment really matters. There's so much that goes into the valuation of an NBA moment. If you own some crypto, it's only a matter of going with what the market dictates and you're in and you're out, you're done. The thing with NBA Top Shot is you would have to compete at the marketplace. If your moment is priced attractive enough, then it gets picked up. But your card could be listed there for days weeks and even months or maybe even years because my point is in as much as it's built on blockchain technology it's really more more like NBA cards rather than more like crypto so that's number one and let's go back to the point regarding minting as mentioned earlier the company behind NBA Top Shot can basically mint as many moments as they want I mean if they tell you they're gonna mint a million moments it's basically up to them and I feel like they're printing money which is ironically what's happening in the world anyway 
they basically built up the demand for these moments, releasing them a little at a time. And that's good in a way because they become more collectible. But my concern there is, yeah, they can just keep minting these moments. And again, they just make the rules which ones are limited, which are not. A relatively unknown player in the NBA minted in a limited edition set would be valued more than a superstar because the superstar got minted in a common set. So there are these things that are like we're pretty much at their mercy. And for me again, comparing to crypto, as we know, Bitcoin has become the number one most valued cryptocurrency in the market, more than having the first mover advantage. Why Bitcoin has appreciated is that we know that there is a finite number of Bitcoin out there. So limited Bitcoin on one hand, unlimited NBA top shot moments on the other. I feel like you have to assess your portfolio and really understanding how much you should put in NBA top shots. So let's take that comparison further. The Bitcoin is the modern day gold. There's a lot of debate on that, but if we just go on that assumption, if Bitcoin is gold because it's finite and there can be only so much and NBA Top Shot keeps getting printed, but basically what I'm trying to say is currencies always used to be about the gold standard, about the gold reserves. So I feel like Bitcoin would be a standard of sorts, almost sacred, almost untouchable. And NBA Top Shot, NFTs would be something more common, the valuation will be all over the place and, and there's more of a guesswork involved as to if you really are getting something that's really valuable. So the number two thing that I've been comparing NBA Top Shot to would be old NBA basketball cards. Now this whole NBA Top Shot business has sent me down memory lane in the early to mid 90s. As a kid, I was collecting NBA cards. A part of me liked to collect because of the value. I would buy the magazine Beckett monthly to see how much my cards have appreciated. Because of NBA Top Shot, I started looking for my basketball cards and so I dug them up. I looked at some cards that I came across and I was like, wow, like I wonder how much this would be valued now. So I didn't look at the value of each one. I actually wasn't expecting them to be overly valuable, but um, there was a specific one that I really liked. So there's this Scottie Pippen card that I have from 1994 to 1995 and it's a really good looking card and this was a dunk over Patrick Ewing and this was from the 1994 to 1995 season. It's a common card, uh, it's not like a limited edition or anything but but being almost 30 years old now I feel like this card would have been $10 or something. Maybe 1994 it was probably like a dollar or two dollars. So I excitedly looked it up, googled it, found it on eBay and the card is only worth three dollars. So just three dollars guys. I was quite surprised because this is a card that's been out there for 30 years and this card was from Upper Deck. One of the more elegantly laid out cards back then and remember this was a season that Scotty was the all-star MVP with, with MJ going off to play baseball. Um, the Bulls were actually very decent. They ended up losing obviously to the Knicks um, in this same series but I thought that that was quite an important part of Scotty Pippen's career. I guess that's a little bit of disappointment. I'm sure there are a lot of cards out there that have better value but I feel like a common card from a superstar at a pivotal time of their career would be worth something more than three dollars 30 years down the line so this lack of appreciation and value with NBA cards is making me hesitant in being more aggressive with NBA Top Shot I feel like in 1994 at some point I probably could have sold it for three dollars back then I guess that's one of the main things that I'm dealing with right now with NBA Top Shot I feel like we're at the mercy of the NBA to be coming up with whatever new technologies then and they could hype it up, over it, and tell us that it's gonna be worth something when, when my Scotty Pippen card has not appreciated in, in over 25 years. So I guess you guys should keep that in mind when you're trying to collect NBA Top Shot. This has no connection whatsoever. I looked at NBA salaries for the Milwaukee Bucks for the 1994 season had the lowest payroll. They were paying their players a total of $20 million then. And now obviously salaries of players have gone up. $20 million is what Terry Rozier is actually making. So Terry Rozier is not even an all-star. I guess my point is the salaries of NBA players have gone up exponentially since 1994. And rightfully so. This is their work anyway. We have nothing to do with it. But as people on the sidelines, the valuation of the cards have not gone up at all. So I mean, that's something you should consider. And another thing, since I was looking up values of what things were in 1994, going back 
to the example of gold, an ounce of gold in 1994 was valued at $384. And right now, a little over 25 years later, the, at the time of the filming of this video, the value of gold is a little over $1,800. So more or less the value of gold in those 25 years has gone up by nearly five times. If as a kid, if I knew how to buy gold and I put my money in gold rather than my cards, then it would have surely appreciated. Yes, basketball cards were fun. There was a lot of speculative value, what they would be 10 years, 20 years, 30 years from now, which where we're at, a lot of these things are always based on speculation anyway. But if you're going long term, I guess you're safer trying to go with a cryptocurrency that would, I mean, in Bitcoin alone, you would have tripled your money if you got in at the start of the year. These are the things that you might want to consider if you want to go along with NBA Top Shot or NFTs as a whole. All right, so that was a lot. Uh, what are my conclusions about NFTs and NBA Top Shot? Number one is I'm not questioning the values of NBA Top Shot right now. There's definitely money to be made. For me, yeah, I would definitely trade the range. I would buy the packs and I would resell them in a short term or medium term period. As long as I make money, I'd be happy. And number two, yes, for those wanting to go long, okay. I definitely recognize that NFTs seem like they're here to stay with a lot of support coming from industry leaders, moguls, and the famous Winklevoss twins of Facebook are actually behind one of the bigger NFT companies out there. And for years now, they've been working on the application of NFTs, more really about owning digital art, digital media, and the NBA is really just one application of this so far. Having said that, if you want to go long into NBA Top Shot, don't collect the common cards. Even if they're superstars, I think it's best that you sell them right away. It seems that only the rarest of the rare would really rise up. This applies to traditional art, to the traditional collectibles, coins. So it's always going to be the best of the best. So if I was going long with NBA Top Shot, I mean, if I'm fortunate enough to come across something that is really of the limited edition, if you can get something that's less than a thousand pieces in circulation, that's something I might hold on to. Or you're free to trade it, I mean, you can make money off of it right away. So basically, that's it. I hope you've picked up something here about where does NBA Top Shot and NFTs as a whole fit in your investment portfolio. Like I said, it's something you should trade right away if it's something that you should hold on to. Make sure that you are hanging on to something that's really rare, all right? Thanks, guys. If you like this video, please don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe if you haven't already. And I'll see you again next time and happy investing.